Amen. Glory to God. You may be seated in God's presence. Today I'm going to talk to you on a subject. I like to give titles to my little my messages, and but most of you who know me know that I'm I'm primarily a teacher. I'm not that much of a preacher unless the anointing comes on me, praise God. But um, the question comes based on something that I heard some people talk about one time in a talk show. And they were basically criticizing the church as a whole, not churches individually, but for the church as a whole. And they were claiming that churches are designed to help people to cope rather than conquer. And I guess that's based on some of the experience of some of the churches they have been to. And my question today is, are we called to only cope or are we called to conquer? Are we called to only cope or are we called to conquer? And it is, it's, there is some truth to what some people say because some churches limit their approach to life's problems by teaching us to cope with them rather than to conquer them. How, much, how many of y'all would rather live with a problem or would you rather to conquer that problem? Well, which, which one would you rather do, live with it or conquer it? Would you rather tolerate a problem, keep it around, or would you rather get rid of it? Glory to God. Well, I want you to understand that God's word teaches us not cope, coping mechanisms, God's word teaches us conquering strategies, praise God. Amen. Say this with me, say God's word, God's word. teaches me, teaches me. Conquering, strategies. conquering strategies and not coping mechanisms. Not coping mechanisms. Glory to God. Amen. So God wants us to learn to claim victory over life circumstances. How many of y'all know that we got, that life is full of negative circumstances? Life is full of difficulties. And becoming a Christian does not absolve you from dealing with those things. On the contrary, often coming to Christ as your Lord and Savior means that you get a big red target on you and Satan is aiming at you, especially if you're trying your best to live for Jesus, praise God. If you don't have problems, then that means you are no threat to the devil and you're no use to God, hallelujah. So if you want to be of use to God, that's most important, you're going to have to understand that you're going to also be a threat to the devil. Praise Jesus. And so Satan, of course, is going to target and he's going to bring issues and difficulties in your life, amongst your family, in your health, in your finances, on your job, hallelujah, in your marriages. He's going to... He's going to try to cause chaos and controversy, and you've got to learn how to deal with them. Glory to God. And when you deal with them, do you cope or do you conquer? Hopefully today I will help you to at least understand. Uh, I don't have the time, the, the, the weeks, to give you a detailed instruction on how to conquer, but we will at least encourage you to look through the scriptures yourself because the Bible has been made available to all of us to learn, praise God. But beloved, there is a difference between coping and conquering, glory to God. Now, you know, to cope, and we're not gonna go with necessarily um, dictionary definitions, because sometimes the dictionary does not explain a word in the way that we use it in everyday life. You, you understand what I'm saying by that? Let me, let me use a good example of when I was growing up. And I don't know, you know, you, you young people can correct me because I don't, I don't look, I'm kind of old now, even though I look very young. <laughs> I am an older man and I don't, I, I can't keep up with the lingo. Sometimes I have to ask some of the young people in our church, oh, can you? So I don't embarrass myself in the pulpit. Tell me, do y'all still say this today? <laughs> so, um, but you know, back when I was growing up, we used to, when somebody could, do something good in sports, you know, maybe they can box real good, they can play basketball. We would say that, that dude is a is a bad brother. Praise God. We would call that, we would say he is so he's bad. Now, bad to us meant good. But now 
actually go into the dictionary, you look up bad means evil. So, so I, when I talk about coping and conquering, I'm talking about how we would normally use such definitions. And the way we use the word cope today, it means to just to put up with something, praise God. It means to just, you know, well, let me just, I just whatever it shall be, shall be. I, it, it, nothing I can do about it. That's coping. I'll just live with it. I'll just tolerate it. Conquering, on the other hand, means to gain the mastery over it. Hallelujah. It means to have the victory over it. It means to be, to, to be able to defeat your opposition, to vanquish it, to subjugate it. Glory, glory to God. So I, what would you rather do, cope with a problem or conquer? Would you rather cope with it? Would you rather just tolerate it? you rather conquer it. I'd rather conquer my problems, glory to God. So if you're going to, if you're only going to cope with something, you're going to just tolerate it. You're, you're going to live with it, but it's going to be a constant annoyance to you. I don't like to be annoyed. I, I, I don't, I like peace, glory to God. I, I'm a man who like, who, I, I don't, in my household, you know, a lot of, a lot of people like drama in their home for some strange reason. I don't, yeah. I, I don't get it. I, I don't get why some people, got, some wives have to always have arguments with their husbands, praise God. I, I don't get it. I, I, I don't understand why they got to always find something to pick on, praise God. I don't find, I don't understand why husbands, while we are the heads of our home, we can't seem to work with our wives. Always got to have some kind of drama in the house. And then they want to call pastor to straighten the whole thing out. How about you just work it out with, with the Lord, glory to God. Learn what the word of God says and learn to conquer the issues in your house, praise God. Instead of going in, in there and causing, making problems, causing problems yourself and then bringing it to the church, or bringing it to, or, or talking about it to sister girl at work, or, to, or calling mom and dad and, 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 and everybody, and, and, and worst of all, putting it on social media for everybody else to see. Oh, it's just ridiculous. Yes. I'm like, I, don't, I shouldn't have to know, I shouldn't have to read Facebook to find out that you are going through issues in your house. Matter of fact, I shouldn't have to read Facebook to find out that my wife is mad at me. Some, yeah, some, some of them don't even tell, they don't even tell their spouse that they're upset with them. They go and put, and put it out on social media. Do you know what that blankly blank did to, to the day? <laughs> and then some of y'all be on social media just be liking it, yeah. commenting on it. Yeah, girl, I'm with you on that one. Uh, <laughs> That, that's, that's not conquering your problem, glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So the difference between conquering and coping is the difference between becoming a warrior or a work or a warrior. Do you know there's a difference between the two of those? Do you know there's a difference between a victim and a victor? A victim is somebody that's just constantly getting beat up, beat down, and, and hurt. While a victor is somebody that says, okay, you're going to hit me, but I'm going to take you back. Glory to God. Yeah. See, I grew up, you know, the way I grew up, you know, most of y'all, I know, I, 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 the majority of people in our congregation are from Liberia, so I have an understanding of some Liberians, praise God. <laughs> I, I, I don't understand everything yet. Most of my best friends, including your pastor, is, are Liberian. Hallelujah. Now, I am what they call black American, African American, but I don't have that many black American or African American friend, pastor friends here in Rhode Island. So I, get, I hang around mostly Liberian pastors, and I kind of get the understanding of some of the um, traditions and things like that. But I grew up as a black American. I grew up in the city in Trenton, New Jersey, and I grew up where we didn't, um, and I had to learn to, to get rid of some of these things after I gave my life to Christ. But we didn't take no crap from nobody, because if you did, they called you a punk and everybody was picking on you. 
So I had to learn to fight back when I was early in my young life. I had to learn to, 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 um, to hit and hit back, praise God. When somebody hit me, I, the, the, the last thing I wanted to do was cry because if I cried, it, the, the whole neighborhood would know it and then everybody else was after me. So I, wouldn't, I didn't sit there and cry, oh, you're picking on me. No, I fought back. As a matter of fact, my mom, God bless her soul, one time I remember I came to the house saying, talking about somebody outside trying to mess with me. My mom said, I'll tell you what, you got a choice. You fight him or you fight me. Which one do you want? <laughs> I looked at mom and I said, uh, I said, I'll take my chances with him. Praise God. Now I'm not sure if that's the, re the way to raise a child, but I, but I tell you, it taught me how, it taught me don't take no stuff from nobody. Now, after I became a Christian, I had to learn to get rid of that when it comes to people, but I had to keep it when it came to spiritual warfare, praise God. I had to learn that I can't sit there and cry and boo-hoo every time Satan attacks, my, attacks me with a problem in some area in my life. I had to learn spiritual warfare strategies. I had to learn that I am a victor in Christ Jesus, glory to God. As a matter of fact, let me just share with you one quick um, situation and out of the many that I can share. But, this, but I think that you can identify with this because how many of y'all have so many different issues on your job? It, it, you got issues with your bosses, issues with coworkers. You, you go through that from time to time, don't you? Yes, sir. You know, I remember um, a period way back, about, I think it was about 12 years ago, I was going through some serious issues on my job. I was being blamed for certain things that was happening um, with the, you know, because I'm an IT person, and if things go wrong, they come after the IT guy. And you know, we had some issues going on in, at the job, and um, and me and my supervisor at the time wasn't getting along. Me and the, me and the person in charge of the whole organization was um, was looking, they were looking down on me. I mean, I was going through a serious time of persecution, praise God. Matter of fact, it was a, it, I was being threatened to be fired. And so a lot of these things were weighing down on me. And um, I remember one day sitting in my office and just like, I'm, I'm human just like everybody else, sitting there just getting Starting to feel depressed, starting to feel hurt, feel like why is why the whole world against me? And I remember the Lord spoke to me. He said, don't you dare show these people that you are hurt. He said, don't you dare show them that, that you're depressed. He said, he said, when you go out of that office, you better have a smile on your face and joy in your heart. He said, but I'm gonna give you some wisdom on how to deal with this and I'm going to enable you to walk in my victory over all of this. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Hallelujah. So Amen. he began to show, give me some wisdom. You know, I, and he, you know, I'm going to tell you, the Lord makes me write stuff down. I don't know about y'all, but you know, he knows that my memory ain't going to ain't, ain't all that great. Um, as a matter of fact, a pastor once told me, he said, a small pen is better than a long memory. Praise God. Amen. And he made me write some of these things down and began, and I began to apply them. And to make a long story short, it became, I, I began to impress some of the people that were ready to fire me at one point. Um, moreover, an evaluation team came in and they found out that I was not at fault for any of the things that I was being blamed for, glory to God. So I got vindicated, hallelujah. And it got to the point where even the guy in charge who was ready to fire me now wanted to name a room after me. And the people who were ready to fire me were now saying, you're not going to quit, are you? You're not looking for another job, are you? So Amen. the Lord, and all of that, the Lord just began to bring victory in that situation. Amen. Now, what, the, um, you know, there's a lot of things I could say that happened in between all of that, how, how God used certain people to, to, to give me words from the Lord and everything, too. But after the end of all that, my wife had a dream. And, she, and, and it, was a, it was a word from the Lord to share with me. She saw me, she said that I, had, I was in the kitchen 
and I had a big round um, anaconda type snake wrapped around me, squeezing me, trying to choke the breath out of me. And she said that when she saw, she said she looked in, in the dream, she said, I had no panic on my face or anything. She said, all I said was, honey, give me a knife. And she went and got me a kitchen knife, and she said that I just left again to cut that serpent up in pieces. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And then she woke up. Yeah. And, she, and that was her saying that because I obeyed the Lord, that I got that victory in that situation, praise God. I was able to deal with the devil, so I would, now I could have just coped with it. I could have just put up with it and hope for the best. Or I could have followed the Lord's instructions and conquer the situation. And what, I, what happened? The Lord, because I obeyed the Lord, I was able to conquer, say conquer. Praise God. Turn with me to a familiar passage of scripture, Romans 8. I, I got a King James Version. I realized that this church is a New Living Translation, so I went to one of those Bible um, sites and copied some scripture. Praise God. Um, but let's, I'm going to read this to you from the King James Version first. But look at Romans chapter 8, verse 37. But I do like the way the New Living Translation renders this passage. Romans 8, jump down to verse 37. And it says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Praise God. The um, New Living Translation, the one that probably most of you have is, No, despite all these things, say all these things. All, what are all things he's talking about? If you read the verses before that, he's talking about all the difficulties, all the tribulations that come as a natural result of becoming a follower of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He talks about tribulations. He try, talks about difficulties. But he says, in all the, despite all these things, I like the way this, it, it says it here. Overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. Praise God. Amen. Overwhelming victory. As a matter of fact, in the Greek, you know, I, I, I'm not a Greek scholar, but sometimes I, I look to Greek scholars to find out what the original um, passage is saying. In the Greek, that word conqueror or victory means super conqueror. Say super conqueror. Super conqueror. Oh, see, you, you don't know it, but in Christ Jesus, you are a superhero. Glory to God. You've got superpowers. You, got a, you have a super villain named Satan, and he's got a bunch of demons coming after you, but you've got the victory already. Glory to God. Amen. The victory already belongs to you. Say, I am a super conqueror. Say, I have overwhelming victory. Glory to God. Overwhelming victory already belongs to you in Jesus Christ. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. You don't have to cope with anything. You need to learn to conquer. Praise God. You need to learn to, to let the devil know that I mean business. Just like, you know, that's, see, Jesus has done everything he's ever going to do to help you. Glory to Jesus. He, he's already died on the cross for you. He's already resurrected for you. He's already defeated Satan for you. Praise God. Why does Jesus need to do anything else other than what he did for you? Glory to God. Now it is for you and me to take what Jesus did and apply it to the difficulties in our lives. We need to learn to stand on what the Lord does. I'm going to tell you, there's a, one of the, uh, if you want to do an exercise in your Bible study, do this. See, look, Romans chapter 8, verse 37 says that all of this is, through, is ours through Christ. Say, through Christ. If you want to do a Bible study, you need you can go through and you know what I if you've got the King James version, I'm, I'm thinking King James like like um Janine said earlier, I, my, my mind seems to always go King James. No matter what version I mean. But you can look at look up certain passages that say in him, in whom, in Christ, in 
Christ Jesus. Through whom? Through him. Praise God. Amen. Look at all these. There's about 130 of them in there. And if you learn to meditate on all those passages, you will know who you are in Christ and what you have in Christ and how to stand on what Jesus has done for you. Praise God. Amen. For example, I think many of y'all are familiar with Romans chapter 8, verse 1 that says, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Praise God. So Satan cannot bring condemnation on you. He can't bring up your past if you understand that, hey, in Christ Jesus, there's no condemnation. If you tell me about my past, you're trying to condemn me for what I did that is already under the blood. I recognize that in Christ Jesus, as long as I am in Christ, there is no condemnation. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Ephesians is full of those blessed, uh, those in Christ truths. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3, it talks about how we have all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. Praise God. So you, if, you, if you want to do an exercise and you want to walk in victory in Christ, go do your Bible. Again, there's about 130 of them. Just underline them and meditate on them so that you know who you are in Christ. Glory to God. Amen. But notice that this is present tense. Say present tense. This is, this is a present tense reality. See, faith is not based on the future. A lot of times we think that believing God means putting everything off for the future. No, faith is based on spiritual realities that are already existing. Hallelujah. I am not trying to gain victory over my problems. Glory to God. See, if I'm, if I'm waiting for God to finally do something about my problems, then I can say, well, I got the victory, and I'm going to be coping with them until I see the victory come. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? See, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 says we walk by and not by. We walk by and not by. Praise God. So I have to know what the word of God says in order for me to walk in the victory that already belongs to me. Glory to Jesus. So I'm not going to cope with a problem until I see my change come. I'm going to conquer the problem even when I don't feel like it is yet conquered. Glory to God. It's, it's just like this morning. Many mornings Satan does this, and I think this is the first time it happened for me coming here. I was not feeling good at all. I, I struggled to even get through the door here today. I, I don't know what was physically wrong with me, but I let the devil know. I said, you ain't putting nothing on me today, glory to God. I, I have come here for a purpose. I've come to minister to God's people. Amen. And I, I and I'm not about to call Jadine or anybody else and say that you know I'm not gonna make it today. Y'all need to find I, I think one of y'all need to preach today. Mm -hmm. No, I said I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna, and, and the Lord's gonna take care of business. The Lord has already provided healing in his word. Glory to God. Amen. By his stripes I am healed. So I just had to continue to declare it and hallelujah now I'm feeling so energetic. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. But I wasn't feeling all that great when I first walked in here and when I was sitting down for a while. But I tell you, God is good. Say God is good. But I decided, I, I said, well, this is, this is going to be a good test of whether I truly believe what I'm about to preach today or not. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we, we stood on God's word and we were able to conquer. And now I'm up here in victory preaching and giving you the word of God today. Ain't you glad about that? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah yeah. So, let, I want you to notice something that Romans chapter 8, verse 37, looking at the King James Version, it says, we are more than conquerors. Notice it says we are more than conquerors. It does not say that we are more than copers. Praise God. It's not about coping. It's about conquering. Say conquering. See, I, I, I like that word because I'm a fighter, praise God. I, but you are a super conqueror. Our Lord Jesus is a conqueror. He did not come down here to just cope with the situation, hallelujah. He didn't come down here and say, well, they're all sinners. 
Um, ain't much I can do about it. I, but I, I'll just deal with it. No, Jesus went to war for us, beloved. The whole thing about Jesus' death, his burial, and resurrection, all of that is warfare, whether you understand it or not. It is, he knew what it took to defeat the enemy, and he went to war on our behalf, and he conquered. Amen. And if you really study the Bible clearly, you see that Jesus often uses conquering language. He uses warfare language, praise God. Amen. Throughout the Gospels, he's talking about warfare. Let, let's look at one good example, which is found in John chapter 16, verse 33. John chapter 16, verse 33. I'm going to read it to you from the King James, and I'll, then I'll read it from, to you from the um, New Living Translation, the NLT. But it says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. Say peace. God wants you to have peace. Glory to God. He doesn't want you to have difficulties. He doesn't want you to have challenges. Now, he knows that those are going to, you're going, they're going to come. But he said, and he says, in this, in the world, say in the world. In the world. Where are you at right now? In the world. You are in the world, glory to God. He says, in the world ye shall have tribulation. Yeah. How many of y'all, who, who is the ruler of this world? Does anybody know? Who is? Satan. You got it right, Esther. Everybody else, y'all got to take a remedial course again. But no, it, Satan, the Bible says, Three times in the book of John that Satan is the prince or ruler of this world. Glory to God. Amen. In Ephesians, it says that he is the prince of the power of the air, the, the spirit that worketh now in the children of disobedience. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, it says that he is the God, small g, of this world. Hallelujah. In 1 John chapter 5, it says that he rules over the, the occupants of this world. Glory to God. In 1 Peter chapter 5, it talks about how our adversary, the devil, comes about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, and that we are to resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are being suffered by your brethren that are in the world. Glory to God. So Satan is the source of all the trials, difficulties, and afflictions that you are dealing with in this world. As long as you are in the world, Jesus said, you're going to have trouble. The reason why is because you are in a spiritual warfare in this world. Glory to God. Amen. And if you're in this world, you're going to have to learn to walk in your victory that belongs to you. Why? What? Through Christ Jesus. See, look at what Jesus said. He said, in the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Why? I have overcome the world. Praise God. Could you be of good cheer if you just had to sit here and tolerate and cope everything? No, you'll be miserable. Trials, difficulties. I don't care what anybody says. They make you miserable. Praise God. James tells us that you can count, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptation. The reason why they... James says that because you've got to make yourself have joy. Praise God. You can't, just, see, you can't tell me unless you're masochistic that when you're going through difficulty, you just, you automatically feel good about it. No. Most of us are miserable. Praise God. The reason why we can be a good cheer, the reason why we can have joy is because we recognize, if we know what the word of God says, we recognize this ain't going to stay. Glory to God. I have all, Jesus has already overcome this for me, and I am more than the conqueror in this whole thing. Praise God. The New Living Translation says it this way. I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Praise God. So you got to know who you are in Jesus Christ. You got to know that you already have the victory in every difficulty, every circumstance, every situation. Let, let me tell you another story because I know y'all like stories. Y'all like y'all want to know all my business, so I'm gonna tell it to you. <laughs> <laughs> years ago, years ago, I remember um, I was I was in the 
the military and I, I was sitting, going to the post office one day to go get some, get my mail. And, you know, we lived in, in, in what, the, what they call base housing, you know, all the, on the military base, we lived in the houses that was on the base, me and my wife and children. And so the post office was that, not that far from my house. But I was just gonna go to the post office and return back to work. But, I, but you know, because of the position I was in, I had a lot of leeway. So as I go to the post office, the Holy Spirit speaks to me, he says, very clearly, he says, son, I need you to go home, and I need you to go home right now. And like, so when I feel that urgency in my spirit, I said, well, you know what, let me let the office know I'm not gonna make it back right now. So I went home. I didn't know what was going on. I, the Holy Spirit doesn't always tell you everything, praise God. And so I go, I, I just, he, he just wants you to follow his instructions. So I went home, and my wife, who was supposed to be at work, was actually at home, and she's crying. She's just, she's like really gone, um, lo losing her mind, basically. Um, I'm glad she ain't here, because she's probably correct me. I wasn't losing my mind, <laughs> but that's the way it looks to me. Um, anyway, but I, I come home, and she's surprised that I'm home, and so I, I said, what is going on here? And so she's, so you know, because I come home, she cried, she, um, she stopped crying, she began to explain to me. She said her mother and father were involved in this cult. And they were losing a lot of money, and they were causing problems for themselves, and causing and giving her a hard time, and causing all kinds of problems for her as well. And you know, we had been planning for years for them to be delivered from this thing, to get saved and things like that, but um, you know, nothing was happening. It just seemed like the Lord wasn't working in the situation. <laughs> But we continue to, but as we get, we continue to talk, and as she was pouring her heart out to me, the Lord told me to give her this word, and it was simple word. I told her that you are to say from now on, I have the victory. Praise God. I said every time the situation comes up, no, nope, every time you get into an argument with your mother, I said you are to say I have the victory. And I made her repeat it to me several times. She said, she kept saying, I have the victory. You know, it, she didn't feel good about it at first. She, you know, like, like many of us, she was like, I have the victory. I have the victory. But she continued to say it. She followed the instruction. Glory to God. Amen. Two months later, my mother, my mother-in-law and father-in-law actually went to a revival and gave their lives to Jesus Christ. Praise Amen. God. Hallelujah. And they are serving the Lord even to this day. They, out, they can outdo me and my wife in their service to the Lord. And they're 86 and 87 years old. You hear me? And they, they do, they more powerful. And they are Japanese. It is hard to get, it's difficult. I spent years in Japan. It is difficult to get Japanese saved, let me tell you. But they gave their lives to Jesus Christ. And after, I think that was back in the, um, eight, late 80s, early 90s, so over 30 years, and they're still walking with the Lord, serving him. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, but at, it had, my wife had to stand on three words. I have the victory. Praise God. She had to keep saying that until she believed it, and when she believed it, then the Lord said, now I can work in this situation. Praise Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you got to learn to start speaking what you want to happen rather than coping with what's going on in the situation as in the present. Hallelujah. You got to learn to see yourself as more than a conqueror. You can't sit there and, and and see yourself as anything less than what Jesus Christ has created you to be. You know, in the Old Testament, um, the Lord twice, he told the Israelites, he said, you will conquer your enemy, praise God. Amen. He said, you can, one will put a thousand of fight, two can put ten thousand of fight. He kept telling them that. And they should have been believing it. But once they got to the promised land, they sent some spies into the land. And then the spies saw some giants. And then they came back, 10 of them came back with what the Bible calls an evil report. And they said, we were like grasshoppers in their sight and in our own. See, they saw themselves as grasshoppers. They saw themselves as nothing. They saw themselves as worthless, praise God. Amen. They didn't see themselves the way God saw them. God saw them as being able to put 
10,000 to fight. Hallelujah. God saw them as more than conquerors over their enemy. But they didn't see themselves the way God saw them. So guess what? They spent another 40 years in the wilderness. Do you believe that it was God's will for them to spend 40 years in the wilderness? No. It was not God's will. God wanted them to go in and conquer the land. But because they could not see themselves the way God saw them, then they began to cope with the wilderness. Hallelujah. Do you want to cope with the wilderness? Or do you want to go into the promised land of plenty? I don't know about you, but I like plenty. I like to have a lot of money in my pocket. Praise God. Because I like to give to people. Hallelujah. But I also like to have a little extra for myself. I don't like being sick. I like being healthy. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. I, I, I like having a good marriage. Hallelujah. I don't want to come home and be fussing and fighting with my wife all day and all night long. I, I want peace in my home. I, I like to get along with my kids. Praise God. So as long as they do what I say. No, I'm just. <laughs> but, but I like I like things to go well. Does it everything? Does it mean everything always goes well? No. But I've learned the secret of declaring who I am in Christ Jesus and knowing that my circumstances has to line up with what I am and who I am in Christ as long as I believe God and what his word says. Hallelujah. Amen. The moment my circumstances fail to line up with what God, is, what God has said about them, then I have to change them by declaring the word of God. Praise the Lord. And as I speak the word of God, then God sends his angelic host to deal with the situation. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. So, Amen. you know, it, I, I don't know about you, but I don't want to go to heaven by myself. I know I need to win soul. Praise God. Amen. So I, I, I had to see myself as a soul winner. You know, that's why I've learned, stop talking about you shy. Be bold. I'm, the Bible says that the righteous are as bold as a lion. You can talk to people about Jesus Christ, but you've got to first declare yourself as being able to do it. Declare yourself as a fisher of men, as Jesus called us. Praise God. Declare yourself as a soul winner, as the Proverbs tells us. Praise Jesus. So, Lee, stop letting Satan whisper all these excuses to you that you can't win nobody to Christ. Hallelujah. Stop going around talking about I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Excusing your sin. Praise Jesus. Amen. Well, you know, Brother Troy, we got to sin every day, you know, because we can't help it. That's a lie. I said that's a lie. I know some of y'all don't like that, but it's a lie. You don't have to sin every day. Praise God. Amen. You are a you are a conqueror over sin. You are a conqueror. Does that mean you're never going to be tempted? Oh, you're going to be tempted all the time. Hallelujah. Yeah. But how many of you know that you don't have to give in to temptation? Praise God. Yeah. The Bible says that Jesus was tempted in all points just like we were, but without sin. You don't have to give in to the suggestions and ideas of the enemy. Say, I'm more than a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm a super conqueror. I'm you can super conquer sin. You don't have to watch pornography. You don't have to give in to sexual temptation. You don't have to lie. You don't have to steal. You don't have to blaspheme. You don't have to do any of that stuff. Well, Pastor Troy, I couldn't help it. But then, then you, you just sat there and lied right there. Praise God. If you claim to be in Christ, if you are in Christ Jesus, now I know this doesn't preach well in, in every church, but if you are in Christ Jesus, you don't have to sin. Praise Jesus. And, and, am I at that place yet where I've never sinned? No, but I'm working on it. Glory to God. Amen. I've learned I'm not going to cope with, with myself sinning. I'm not going to excuse myself from lying. Hallelujah. I'm not going to tell myself, oh, well, you know, we, I, I'm just a human. I'm imperfect. No, I've declared what the scriptures say. The scriptures say that I am dead to sin. Yes. Romans chapter 6 says I'm dead to it. Praise God. So I have to declare that every day. I am Jesus has conquered sin on my behalf, and I am walking in his victory over sin. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So you don't have to let any demonic forces destroy your holiness, yes. destroy your marriage, destroy your, your job, destroy your finances, destroy your health. You can walk in victory over all those things in Christ Jesus. Amen. 
Now when I say, now when we talk about health, I'm a firm believer that in the power of God to heal and that it is God's will to heal. Glory to God. But I also know you need to exercise. You need to eat right. And that's where, that's where you avoid temptation. Hallelujah. Because I'm, I'm like you. My body wants to do a lot of stuff that, um, that I will not let it do. My, my flesh wants to eat that second chop, piece of chocolate cake. And the third. And the fourth. And with some extra scoop of ice cream. My body wants to do all that. I don't let it. Praise God. And being married does not exempt me from being attracted to other women. Hallelujah. I just learned not to look at y'all like that. Praise God. Amen. 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 Yeah, y'all fine. Y'all look good. And I, and I will acknowledge your beauty, but that's about as far as it goes. Hallelujah. So you guys, <laughs> the thing is that I've learned the secret of walking in victory. I don't cope with lust. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't say, well, I'm just a man. No, I don't cope with that. I conquer it. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Jesus. It's all right, Clef. We're almost done. Let, let me conclude it here. See, y'all need to be glad that I brought notes because um, like a man of God once told me, he said, blessed is he who uses notes, for he shall surely know when he is done. <laughs> See, if I... With, with these kind of truths, man, I could go. I could go for another hour, but I'm going. We're going to conclude it here and help you. I just want you to understand. There's a difference between coping and conquering, or rather, putting up with something and putting it and putting it down. Praise God. You are not called to put up with. You are called to put down. Praise God. And when I say put down, it means under your feet. The Bible says that all these things are under your feet. Praise God. You are a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. You have overwhelming victory in Christ Jesus. You don't have to tolerate the works of the devil in your life anymore. He may attack, but you can attack back and you can stand and remind. See, sometimes, see, Satan is ignorant. Sometimes you've got to continue to remind him of what the word of God says. Hallelujah. So, what you want to do? You want to cope or do you want to conquer? What do you want to do? Cope or conquer? Uh, Say, I want to conquer. Say, I'm more than a conqueror. I'm not more than a coper. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet. Praise God. Every promise in the book is mine. Every promise in the book is mine.